wives hold a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. And welcome to the Holocron Show. Today we've got uh, the guy who is notoriously for falling asleep with a Twi'lek and waking up next to a Wookiee, Sleepy John. What's up, Sleepy? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. And once again, we've got the uh, Space Wizard, the man that thought that Tatooine was way too cold, so he decided to move to Arizona. Uh, what is going on, Solo Wookiee? What's happening? Glad I could be here. And then Marco. Uh, as usual, I'll uh, kind of lead the talks and we'll go over this hey for you that haven't watched the holocron show before welcome it's just we go over kind of people that we see the future of star wars uh being a big part of it and kind of how their careers have have worked out through star wars um today we're going to do it on charles soul uh just kind of give you an overview of what he is and some of his work some of his more interesting pieces some of the pieces that we uh we liked maybe and maybe some of the stuff he's going to do in the future, because uh, we do know that he's going to be uh, the first person to release anything on the High Republic. He already has a uh, a preview of, of kind of the novel that he's going to do, um, and we know some of the characters, or at least one of them for sure. So we're going to get into that. Um, we're going to start off with uh, what he did in comics with Marvel. He did Lando in 2015 uh, with an artist, John, you know the artist? Who's the artist? Yeah, Alex, Alex Maleev. He uh, great artist. He's done a lot of different Marvel work. He is one of the Italian style painter artists like Delato, uh, Granov, Perillo, some of those names you might know. Maliv has been around for a long time as well. And he's done some great stuff. He's done some cool Punisher stuff. Um, so w one of the better artists definitely out there right now. Yeah. So in the Lando series, you know, there's a couple that came out. I know Star Wars can be confusing sometimes. We're talking about. The 2015 Lando series, uh, it's got a lot of brilliant colors on it. There's a um, there's a whole bunch of covers. I think Scotty, obviously Scotty Young's got a cover. Everybody's got a cover. Everybody's got a cover. This is one of my more favorite covers. It's, I think, one of the variants. Uh, it's just got Lando. For those that aren't watching, it's a white cover background. Uh, it's got Kate Lando in it. It's got Lando on the barge in it. It's got the Millennium Falcon. It's got uh, Stormtrooper. It's pretty cool. I think it's Land, something like that. Um, but there's a lot of different covers for that, uh, as most of these early Star Wars had, especially Marvel was pushing out 50,000 uh, variants. I mean, you got a variant for a variant just for no reason. Wait, wait you got to you got to go back to that cover. What's his name? I want to hear you say the the little guy on the bottom right. No, absolutely not. I won't pronounce that because I'm notorious for mispronouncing names. We know that already. Uh, so I need 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 nub. Nibnub? Nib yeah, yeah. Nibnub? Nibnub. Nibnub is also the cover. Like that. For those people that uh, are watching, it's the uh, the guy in the... So there's a stormtrooper right next to him is Nibnub. Nib Nib it's, Nibnub. It's his, it's his co-pilot when they take down uh, the Death Star in yes. Return of the Jedi. And he speaks English better than I do, so that's great. Um Right. I've never been able to say his name very well either, but so I knew it would trip you up. I yeah. had to placate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so he, uh, but so in that series, um, you know, that's his first series and the art style, like John was saying here, it's very, it's very painterish. It's very uh, like model esque, like these models are realistic to it. There is some really, um, how do I put this gently? There's a there's some very interesting themes in that book. Like uh, at one point, there is clone alien twins who are also lovers and look like Black Panther. And yep, there they are, right there. They look like Black Panther, and uh, they're they're talking about adopting a, a clone kid of them. So like, there's really some weird stuff going on in that book uh, throughout that series. I mean, they're kind of cool. It's kind of cool, kind of interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan when it came out. I don't think it was too great. I'll be honest with you. I bought it when it went to the dollar bin because there's a – they used to with some of these piles. Ended up throwing together the whole set for like $5 less than the TPP was. So that's when I read it um, because I read the first one and I was a little bit uh, – shall I say not – it wasn't my style. It wasn't. It wasn't quite my style. But there was some cool things that came up with that. Um, the two uh, Black Panther clone tiger lovers ended up fighting because there was a uh, 
there's a mask called the Lord Momen helmet. It was a uh, he was an old Sith Lord, um, and whenever you got within reach of his helmet, supposedly it kind of possessed some of the people in it in the storyline. It was a mini, um, but the one thing I'll say about it is like you didn't know it then, but you'll see some of the themes kind of come through. So the the next. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have done an even more different uh, title. The next title he did was Obi-Wan and Anakin. And I actually have asked a lot of people if they ever read this. I think I'm one of five people who have ever read this series. Um, it's a steam... <laughs> Essentially, it's a steampunk uh, story um, with pirates. Um, so, like, they had Zeppelin flying machine type things in there. Instead of blasters, it was, like, pistols. It's Anakin and uh, Obi-Wan when they're young. I can't remember much more of that series. Um, uh, anybody so else? Was this, supposed, was this supposed to be like in regular continuity of Star yeah, Wars? Yeah, like, yeah, what oh, yeah. This is absolutely the... canon. Yeah, yeah. All this so stuff why is canon. Was, so why oh, so the cool was thing, it so different? I, so I, so this, the cool thing about the Lando one, to get back to Lando one, because I did forget this, is like the whole backstory of it, and this is what he starts doing, is filling in backstories. Is he introduced this like yacht that – or a – ship that uh the emperor owned and eventually later on it shows up in novels uh that was kind of like a treasure barge for him and that's where they got the helmet because lando went to go steal it with the two uh black panther twin thing clone things so like that little that little snippet right there was something that then along mine years later ended up showing up in other story arcs mm -hmm. um the zeppelin anakin obi-wan i don't know like i think they were just trying saying what his range could be to test different markets and kind of see where he could go with it and i think a lot of the times too he gives his artists like free range to do whatever they want um which is kind of nice but at the same time then you're like each story is really really different and like the art doesn't tell the story half as much as probably like the verbiage does maybe or like the little tidbits because there's a lot of stuff in these early minis that like looking back on it now because i know what happened down the line i'm like dang man i i missed that in there but you wouldn't know to look for it right so they're kind of like if you can get these minis like i think these are series that when he starts writing stuff like these novels that come up if you can get these like five six books for like four or five dollars like these pack outs like get them right now because people might go back you know fans will you know they have a tendency to do that they'll go back and they'll be like oh i want to see what his run is on this and run is on that and yeah. the obi and anakin i think was a little bit lighter the, the lando i mean they're they were just running that thing off the machine as fast as they could. Well, um, some of those are actually starting to kind of go back up now. Just be, I, I think, I think just because of some of the solo movie yeah. coming out and, and some of that whole backstory that got tied in there, I, I think some people might be looking at it like, well, let's find out a little more about Lando. Yeah. And so I think some, some people, they are starting to come up just a hair, but and that's how it is. People start, I mean, fans major. always do this. Okay. So Star Wars fans are always like this, like in, and John, you know, this, you know, almost a year ago now, I told you when you first said, what about Star Wars? I said, collected runs, like popular yeah. runs to characters, because that's how Star Wars collectors collect. Like that's what they buy and mm -hmm. they don't always buy it on times, but then they're always looking for it when it's not completely destroyed. And, like, these are small runs that are cheap probably right now that you can find. And I think Wookie has a good point. Like, going back to some of these, look, man, I don't care. I'll talk about a lot of them, but try to go back and, I mean, for people to try to go back and find that Obi and Anakin, and if they're really going to want it, I don't, I'm not sure that's going to have a huge fan base, but maybe one day Steampunk shows up in freaking uh, Star Wars, and then all of a sudden it's a huge fan crossover base. If it is, that's the series to have because he's already done it. But the finer point is a lot of these small things – it's also for those guys who are out there and you know, they're out there. They want first, first, whatever. So like some of them are cameos and some of them are objects and some of them are whatever they are, but he has a lot. He has a lot. And when we get down to some of his other series, we'll start talking about certain artifacts so much that, that kind of show up or, or, or people. And it, it, it show it, it goes across the board. So after, after 2016, he gets his first, what I'd consider his first major title. He does the, the, the pole Durham title and Poe, goes on that title goes on for two years he has over 30 of it um i it took me a while to get the whole series together i am not fully through it yet uh, because what, I, what volume are they in on that poe dameron no, i don't know what they is are. that volume I, volume i, I want to say it's two. only volume two yeah because he was in it he was in it to 2018 to the whole thing so i've now went back and collected all those out of the 50 cents and dollar bin uh, to throw it together so i'm starting to read that i haven't thoroughly read it through um 
let's talk about his next work because this is where I think he really starts starts getting into it. When I start when he starts getting into it, he starts doing uh, the second run of Vader. So the 2017 Vader series, uh, Imperial Machine is kind of the first arc of that. That's the red cover where Vader's like got his red lightsaber. He's in black, kind of reflects in it. This starts out slowish, but there's some interesting things in it. So in it, uh, Vader is, it's right after, literally right after uh, Order 66, right? So it starts up and they have Vader come in and like they show like them taking all the, uh, all the lightsabers from the dead Jedis and putting them kind of like burning them down. And the Emperor goes, listen, uh, you're not really cool. You don't get a, you don't get a lightsaber till you go and kill a Jedi with nothing and then take the lightsaber and corrupt the crystal. So he sends Vader kind of on this mission and in the, in the first arc, that's what he's supposed to do. So he goes and he finds this Jedi. That's like all out by himself. He's just a warrior Jedi. He had taken this thing, this barrage vow, which was pretty much a vow to like work on being one with the force, but you're kind of like separated from the Jedi. So you're trying to like inner peace yourself and he's on this desolate planet, but he knows something's going to happen one day. Well, all of a sudden, Vader shows up, and he's actually kind of—he kind of whoops the crap out of Vader, like just destroys him, like tears him apart. And Vader ends up falling down to this end of the and like so all this leading up to it, you're like, okay, cool, whatever. But this is kind of cool. So he ends up falling down. Vader ends up falling down. By the way, 2017 uh, series. You know what we do with spoiler words? It's not a spoiler anymore. You know this, right? Like if you're watching the show, you're, <laughs> it's not a spoiler. Anymore. Okay. So 2017, we're doing this. So this series goes, Vader falls down to the pit. He's like, all his mechanics are done. He's just been killed, smashed apart. There's a robot down there with him. Apparently, Vader can rebuild himself by the force by dismantling a robot and remantling himself with it. Yeah, I don't, I know it's weird, but like compared to the other stuff he did before that in like with the twin aliens and like the the steampunk thing, this doesn't seem so crazy anymore. So you're kind of like, where's he going with this? It's kind of interesting. That so makes Vader, like, that, that's more believable and makes more sense than yeah. a lot of things. I mean, that's yeah. I, I, like I can default. see it. You it's know, kind of I mean, so he's kind of, yeah, parts so of like parts, right? Right. So he's kind of I, like the C three PO with the red red arm. Like it's weird, but like kind of cool. Hey, I've had to rebuild Volkswagens on the side of the road with zip ties, duct tape, and bailing wire. So if you got a spare robot, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he does, so he's like so he has no legs or no he's got like one arm so he literally uses the force and rebuilds himself so he comes back obviously you can figure out what happened to the Jedi that didn't go too well so well you know Vader did this thing where he like threatened some civilians and the Jedi's like I'll save the the civilians instead of blah oh yeah so there you go so you're done real cool guy though uh, his name was Karak something or another he's like cool go check him out. I, I suggest you read the arc because I didn't give the whole arc away. Um, another arc. That, wait, wait. Spell his name. K I R A K. K I R A K. Correct. Okay. Correct. 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 Infla or Infla. I don't not even try his last name. Um, but yeah, go check that arc out. It's pretty good. And it'll also give you an introduction to what he starts doing later on. So then after that, I think he really starts picking up steam. After that, the next arc he does is Legacy's End, and maybe it's because. You know, if you hear the intros to some of these and everything else, the whole holocron thing, it has a lot. It has a lot to do with a Jedi by the name of New, to cast a New, and she was the librarian, right? Um, and this arc has to deal with that. What happens is they have to go and find. Um, so wait, wait for the for the listeners and and people watching. Um, the first time you see this gal is in uh, the Clone Wars when Obi Wan goes into the library and he's looking for um, certain information and the missing right. planet, et cetera, et cetera. That's the the sweetheart of a grandmother lady that he's talking to. Right, and the first time you see her in comics is actually in Canon Seven. She's got like a one shot in there, like a one piece. I think she says something to him or something. Yeah. yeah. But then, so then this is more in depth in her, and they change around the way she looks. She looks a little bit more BA, you know, she's really cool. So how this comes, but it also has something else that's really cool. And it has some person, it has the uh, Grand Inquisitor, which for the people who don't know who that is, the Grand Inquisitor uh, was somebody who showed up first in the Rebel show. And they are kind of like a team that worked for uh, Darth Vader. 
uh, really the Emperor at first, but then Darth Vader, they explain it. So he does all this backstory on it, which was cool because when Rebels came out with these characters, the Grand Inquisitors and the rest of the Inquisitors, it's like the second brother, the third sister, the fourth, whatever. Mismatch of people, but... The fifth, they, the seventh, and the yeah. sisters. So when they came out with it, like everybody's like, well, oh man, these are, be it. you know, they're cool characters. We want to know more, we want to know more. Well, it was cool. He was writing it. So he kind of started writing this. So it turns out that Darth Vader, the Emperor, had ha had these characters. And part of the misconception, and misconceptions happen a lot with some of the characters they wrote, was a lot of people thought that the Grand Inquisitor, because he used to be one of the guards, the Jedi guards, that all Inquisitors were Jedi guards. He ends up going through and explaining to you backstories on a lot of the Inquisitors, and a lot of them were either Padawans or Jedis that were converted. So it's, the Grand Inquisitor, as far as we know, is the only uh, Jedi guard that actually had that that happened so but that he played a big part in rebels so this is the first time you see him you see him in seven here um and his thing is he hates new like he he thinks she she held him back in the jedi order they explain how the emperor explains how they corrupted him uh and turned him into the grand inquisitor and darth vader goes through a little bit of a part which is kind of cool where he just starts like dismantling all the the uh, all of them he just starts cutting like their pieces off like he knocks one eye out he cuts an arm off somebody else and they're like, what are you doing? The Grand Inquisitor's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, if they can't deal with the loss and they can't be Inquisitors because they can't be part of the dark side, blah, blah, blah. Really cool. He gives you the backstories, kind of how it does. They're all right there uh, in Seven, which is really cool. So New has to go back. She is um, also something that's cool in this arc is that New, they show her recording all these holocrons. And they actually show that she seals off a cave. And all the holocrons later, they show it when Luke opens up the cave, and that's how he restarts to reform the school. Which is, I mean, this is like 2017 when or 2018 when he's doing this. So this is pretty early on to explain that little point of view that they use later on in the shows and with the, the tree that catches fire and all that other stuff that they did in the movies. But like, it's kind of cool that she, he was already doing these little pieces to put it together. She goes back to go get a list of the a holocron that had the list of the kids and if you watched rebels you know the kid list they were always trying to find the list of the four sensitive kids blah blah, blah. all these holocrons are supposed to have it she had like the master list they went out there to try to find it eventually she can't tempt herself to just walk past the grand inquisitor so she goes to try again a fight with him yeah. everything so, leads to something. so she has cerebro yeah pretty much she does she does <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah she does so she so they get it whatever darth vader ends up capturing her because she tries to kill herself doesn't work he ends up getting the list. Um, and the Inquisitors go on. And actually, like, it, it just gets, it gets better from there. Because then they just start, like, Inquisitors start attacking Inquisitors. They do the Burning Sea arc, which was an okay arc. Um, and the Mole Clan in it. Uh, other Jedis are dying there because they, that's one of the themes that runs through this whole thing. He finds the Jedis that's, that were uh, alive during Order 66. And they keep killing them. Oh, one thing. I, and then one thing I didn't mention in this series is... Uh, Darth Vader, they actually show Darth Vader making his lightsaber, how he corrupted the crystal and ended up making his lightsaber. And part of that happened in that uh, the same arc with New because he goes back to uh, where, like, the Emperor's like, go back to where you lost to Obi-Wan and, and corrupt the crystal. So he does, and then he sees this vision of him turning good, which is a little messed up. It's That part is, like, the sole thing. Like, you're like, you're getting a little too artistic with this, like, no, no, right. Who's whose crystal does he is it his does he cheat like Kylo? I I no. can't remember who no, no, no. Kylo's so it, a cheater. So but. I think if I remember correctly, it was at Kirk guys. I think that was the the I think it was hit the Kirk guys, his uh his crystal his. that he tried to crop. And it first didn't corrupt and then he went supposedly in a flashback in or in a vision and defeated the Emperor and then it actually turns out that he did, by the end of that first arc, change it to the red lightsaber in the first arc, which was the machine one. And when he did that, it uh, he went in there and they asked about the – and then at one point they asked about the holocron too. He destroys the list of the holocron or something like that. So mm -hmm. wherever that, whatever book that's in, that comes down. But you get to see him build his own lightsaber, which is kind of cool and how that happened. Uh, so it's a good read, and I think it's something interesting that people – was that, was that ever explored before in Marvel or – I think so. Mean? I think they kind of said like he did. They, he corrupted his original. He corrupted something. Or there was there was some books that did have something to do with it in the Dark Horse section. Um, Just because but, you know, like you said, um, 
the, he Sewell is starting. You can see the build up already is starting to become very integral to the Marvel canon and Star Wars canon in general. At pretty early on, yeah, uh, he's very well respected in the comic book community as a writer. He's done a lot of good stuff other than Star Wars, but we're going to get into some of it in a little bit later as well. Some of the other things that you can slowly see this build up. Yeah, so that's what this is. So the Vader series, you're going to think, John, that's a perfect point. The, the Vader series and why we're explaining it is because this is the build up to see where he finally starts taking off. So after that, they do the Burning Sea thing, which, I, I mean, look, if you want to talk about more Akbars and everything else, I didn't like it personally because of how I felt about the Clone Wars and what they had done with the prince there. I thought it was really strong and great character. I will say I think they kind of ruined it. I won't ruin that arc, which sucks because I ruined all the rest of them for you, but you can ruin it for yourself when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? No, okay, now you're just going to stop, huh? All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Gave us, you gave us a little yeah. taste. Now we got to pay for the but, the, but there, there is some cool <laughs> things in there because there's actually a scene in in that uh, in the Maul Clan arc, where you actually see it later on in a video game down the road, actually one of the video games, the video, the last of the Fallen Order that came out, there's a there's a part that they do there that they, that is one of the cutscenes, and this is what I'm saying about him, like stuff that he puts in two three years ago, either they do an homage or they they use it or they flat out use it and take it and put it into something down the road, right. and that's I think right. what you're kind of saying, John, is like yeah. they'll take stuff that he gets yeah. into these books and start putting it later down the road. So then we get into probably what I consider the best part of the art. I mean, I like the stuff about the Inquisitors because I was like, I was one of those fanboys that was like, hey, I want backstories. But then they get into one of what I think was probably one of the best and helped with a lot of the future comics too, uh, stuff that I like. It's called Vort uh, Fortress of Vader. This gets into, um, which remember when we were talking about Lando, we talked about Moman's uh, helmet. Um, so New had a secret room and in that secret room, Moment's helmet shows back up. So in the second arc of this book, the moment helmet shows back up. But then by the fourth arc, it has a very big part. He pretty much goes back to Mustafar and he has the helmet and the helmet gives him the plans and the outline to build Fortress Vader or what's commonly known as Vader's Castle. Um, Vader's Castle, the first time I think you see it on screen is in row one, right? Uh, and the first time it's kind of seen, like you see half of it in the adaptation in the comic, but in this one, you see like the full part of Vader's castle and he builds it one time. And what you also get to see, it's the first time you see Momin, M-O-M, Momin, Momin. I can't, he did say you, you don't pronounce it Momin. I think you pronounce it Momin. But Momin, Momin, you see Momin, Momin for the first time. And it's like a visual ghost, like, okay. So I like the artists really get to do a great job. So it's like a ghost robot type thing, maybe a dark force ghost robot type thing where it like spans and doesn't expand. And they build this like outline thing and there's tons of reds and it's, it's very trippy. And uh, then the castle, like he tries to get in and he can and it blows up or whatever. And then he, so he goes to the hole because the hole where he corrupted the crystal is like this big Sith point, by the way. So it might be also important later on someplace if they ever do a whole Caliban, like backstory and like Sith temple, old Sith temples that stuff got built on. So, but the point is, he goes back there, rebuilds it on that spot, and that's where Vader's castle to this day, till it started being demolished, which they later on showing it falling apart, was a cur happened. That's where he built it. That's where Vader's castle is. That expanded. So then other people that have done stuff for the, the new series that's coming out, the High Republic, have, have written in the series of Vader's castle or have used Vader castles in their series, um, which is kind of cool, which means that it's not just him doing something and then he's the only one that writes about it. It actually cross brands across all Star Wars stuff. Um, and I think one time we will get in, we'll explain those series, like the Vader's Castle and Vader Castle Returns. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed both of those series. I know you guys know that, and there's some sweet covers. I know in other, um, on other episodes that we've done, we've kind of briefly talked about them and how much we enjoyed those uh, series. So we will get you out a video on those. And those um, are pretty affordable and easy to get. I, I actually just picked up a second possibly maybe a third <laughs> and yeah. full complete runs of them. Yeah. So and, I mean, there's a bunch and, and of covers. It was not them. expensive. Yeah. I don't know what covers you got for them. There's some definitely some cool covers. The Ventress and some cover. cool variants. Yeah. Variants. That's what I'm saying for the variant covers. The, there's the Ventress cover and there's the um, Darth Maul cover. They're really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a Vader cover that I think is great, but we'll get into those series some other time. So that's pretty, that pretty much uh, 
Oh, one more point about that series. So that, I mean, that's the castle where it's complete, you know, at the end of it. But there's also something. So in 25, and this is what I'm telling you, like he, he does some stuff and the art kind of messes stuff up. There's this scene. And for those people that can't see it, it's like a fiery emperor uh, behind uh, Anakin's mom. And then like. Shmi. Yeah, Shmi's Shmi. Guy Swalk, and then in the right corner, there's like this swirly black character. That's actually Darth Vader's dark force thing. Um, and that's what he's seeing. And then you see the tummy and there's like a, a whirl, a red whirl in her tummy. And people, when this first came out, interpreted it as being the emperor cloning himself into uh, Shmi's tummy or using the, the what's the little thing? Me- the Metachlorian. Metachlorians, like including the Metachlorian count. So Matthews, one of the guys from the story group came out and said, like, that's not true. That's not true. And kind of squashed the rumor back then. But when the new movie came out, they're like, yeah, so if it was a clone, if Ray's a clone of a whatever relative, then so was Anakin. So then Soul came back out again and said, like, no, we sat down with the story group. We And, and it is. Like, they go hand in hand. So he has been working with the, And then he went back to some other stuff, too, they did with the story group. So, so – before Vader, he'd already been down with the story group, which you know is extremely important for what's going forward and how their all plans work out. So we know he's talking to them all the time, which is good. He started writing some of the uh, some of the stories for Battlefront 2, which is a video game. came out on PlayStation originally, I think, and then I think it crossed over to everything. Yeah. Um, it's good, and he has the Inquisitor. So the Inquisitors, uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, one of the sisters show up in that. So now they showed up in Rebels. They've showed up on his book. They've showed up in that. Um, it's kind of cool. He had a little part in it. Then after that, I think, but he did probably what I would consider his best-selling marquee piece. This this book was selling out but from issue number one. It was you had to buy it day two at the latest at your LCS, or you were not getting it. It was that popular. Um, and that is the Kylo Ren, the Rise of Kylo Ren series. It came out, like, I think one came out, like, two weeks before the actual movie came out. So, like, people were like, oh, well, maybe we'll see something in the movie. So, they, yeah. they, they did this. So, Kylo Ren came out. The, the Rise of Kylo Ren came out. And that book was hot. I know, John, you've read the series before. What did you think of the, yeah. the series? Yeah, the series was great. I Honestly, the, the first issue came out, and it was, it took a couple weeks before it got up in the $20 range. Um, but it was, you know, maybe right before the, like you said, coincided with the new movie and before the second issue came out as well or yeah. right around usually you see that with comics like uh when the second issue is about to come out people want to get that first issue that they missed so then you see the price go up a little bit more so they can catch up um am i wrong on this real quickly i'm sorry didn't it yeah, wasn't it week after week after week it, there was no gapping in the week on this right this was they were pushing it out yeah week. you're right it was i think it was one two three four like i think they pushed yeah. it all out so it was yeah. like Week one yeah. and two before the movie. The second week, that weekend, the movie came out, and then three came out. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, well, something I think like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think people weren't expecting it. I don't know how many people knew what the content was going to be because when it started heating up, I was trying to figure out why it was getting hot, other than just being Kylo Ren. Um, and I started reading about that it was his origin. I didn't start reading until issue three. I like yeah. to read a bunch of issues at the same time. I'm sure you guys are like that yeah, too. We do too. Yeah, um, that's how you plot them out. Yeah. So, you know, that that was what tipped me off. Like, I think people are hungry for the origin. And the story yeah. was yeah. was really cool, I thought. Uh, that was the first time it's ever been explored, correct? Yeah. So, was, well, okay. So, in the books, there was a thing. So, and we, we'll get into this in a different, different series. There was a, uh, like... Um, Acolytes of Ren, that was originally being written for books, and with Leia before, I think it was going to take off. But I think with changing directors and how they kind of started doing from two to three in the movie, this is too deep of a dive for this. But they had to kind of change around how that was going to go, so they hadn't really gone into the the Ben thing, except for that, uh, like the Han. So at one point, there's a book where uh, an actual novel, not a comic book, where they kind of talk about the birth of uh, of of, could, of Kylo Ren, but when he's a baby, so he's not Kylo Ren, he's Ben Solo. Ben, ben so Ben Solo, Solo and they kind of mm-hmm. talk about, like, Han Solo's like, look, dude, I want to stay home, but F it, you know, I, this ain't I ain't daddy daycare. <laughs> you know? yeah. And he takes off and Leia's like, uh, and, and they actually, which is kind of cool because, you know, the, in, in other episodes, you know, before this, back in the old legend days, you know, uh, Leia was a Jedi uh, at one point, and in this book, they kind of give her, like, 
and this was before the Johnson movie, so they kind of gave her you the knowledge that she she was a little bit trained with the force and she had like force abilities and stuff like that. Uh, and she did, did a lot of training with Luke. Luke yeah, yeah. So trained her a ton. Yeah. So and then and then that book then it, it kind of explained that there was this group out there going and getting uh, Darth Vader artifacts that were passed away, and you could kind of see the opening up of how they were going to form it into Knights of Ren. But then with switching around, I think some of the writers on the movies, and then like um, Carrie Fisher dying, they kind of they kind of stopped doing those books. That, yeah. And, yeah, and quick point, I earlier I called Kylo Ren a cheater, and that's in this series. He he actually changes <laughs> his own Kyber crystal. Yes. And yeah, so, he so he doesn't really kill another Jedi and change theirs. He takes his own and, and turns it red cheater. Yeah. Cheater. Um, so, but th then, uh, what happens in three, and I think this is why, yeah, I remember too, uh, at that point we were kind of talking about this cause you had hit me up and you're like, have you heard about this Kylo book? And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of excited about the movie. So I, of course I have, I picked it up already. Plus I was hoping that they would do the end of the bloodline series. Um, in the book and i was kind of disappointed they didn't because it was really in my opinion it seemed like something was good well the other thing the uh knights of ren you know pe yeah. people were looking for that appearance in comics too. yeah oh absolutely yeah so knights of ren were so. in yeah yeah that's where they came out was in the knights of ren yeah but, so i was like oh maybe they'll the reason why i think i did and a lot of fans picked it up and i could be wrong because all fans are different but i think a lot of it started off that we picked that book up one because we were hoping that it'd be the tie-in from from uh, Bloodlines, where they're talking about the acolytes of of Ren, and give us the finalization of that, which they, I don't think they ever have. Maybe I have to go back. Maybe I missed it. Maybe somebody did write it. Like Soul wrote some stuff that I missed, and and reread stuff. But like, I thought that's what it was going to be, and it turned out it wasn't. And it turned out it just gave you a little bit of the background of the Knights of Ren, which was kind of cool. I mean, I'm still missing mm -hmm. that gap, you know, uh, or whatever. in, in the chron, because I really do like the chronological con uh, canon order of stuff. So I'm no. still missing. That part in, of the puzzle, but... in Knights of Ren, that the gen, uh, what's his name, the general, the head before Kylo mm -hmm. takes mm -hmm. him out. Spoiler mm -hmm. alert! Mm -hmm. He doesn't Not wear spoiler. armor. He <laughs> is his body is All like scarred burned up. and scarred. Yeah. Did I miss where that came in? So How did that, that happen? I think so. I th so in I think in the in the bloodline, I have to go back and read it. I think he was one of the first uh, acolytes, and I think there is. So what I'm saying is, I think there's a gap there of a story, and yeah. I think this is what Soul does too. So okay. he's giving you a piece. Now we're going to get okay. back and explain that because there was there was a character who was running around and who did get damaged, and it's a, okay. that's it was, a whole it other was, um, thing. It was Deadpool. Same yeah, or Deadpool. 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 Or Deadpool. <laughs> no, but so 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 there was these like I, I, that's kind of what, he, that's kind of what I, he looks like. I was in there and I was reading it again and and doing all that and I I thought at one point that I had just missed it and you know old man. So there pretty much was I'm so there pretty much was so this is how it works. There pretty much was some street kids that the uh, the 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 New Republic after it took over from the Galactic Empire kind of overlooked and some of them weren't like completely overlooked. They just felt like you know, they're like kids, kids. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, you know, what's cool. Darth Vader was cool. So like, I don't know why he had, and you know, that's kind of like one of the running, running talking points that I really like in this new era that they're talking is like, was the galactic empire all bad? Like there's some good people that did bad things there. And obviously Darth Vader and the emperor was bad, but there were some people that were like, look, we were getting robbed and stealing. What else did you want us to do? Like we needed order. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you went up to those people who did get order and you crushed them. Like, and when they got overlooked, then their rebellion is like, oh, crud. Well, this Darth Vader guy, we had the good life then. We had the good life on the Vader. Let's go out there and get some of his stuff. Or like, hey, I hate my home life. Let's, you know, I'm on the street now. Let's go get it. And so these street kids and stuff like that ended up going, they'd break into museums and they'd break into temples and stuff like that. And they would steal certain parts uh, of Vader stuff or of, uh, because, you know, it's kind of banned. It's kind of like contraband. So they'd steal stuff from the Empire. And one and some of them did get into you know when you're doing that when you're stealing stuff don't steal kids it's not a good idea because um, you might get away with it a couple times but you, you're probably gonna get pretty beat up uh, or hurt in yourself. In the end, or, you always get caught. Crime yeah. never pays. Or you always get caught. So th I think that that character is one of the kids that are then. The problem is they were like changing names a lot. Like you know Kylo Ren is Ben Solo, so like you got to kind of track all that down until they come up with the medium point. I don't know if it's worth it to try to track that down um because it's such i mean they just used it as like one chapter six page inserts kind of like in the soka book where you had the background that they eventually used for the yep. season seven stuff in clone wars um 
it kind of was the same thing. And like I said, I think it's in Bloodline. It could have been in a different. No, it had to be in Bloodline. It had to be in Bloodline. Um, so they did that there. So yes, yes, I think he is in, in that novel, the actual novel of that. And that's who that is. Uh, I do think they're going to revisit that. So this, but then one other part comes in there too. So talking about all that stuff, which is great, because now we just came to the bottom line. We did just came up with that. That wasn't actually a talking point, but how that opens up an area where they might use his work again. There is a part that we know that he leaked, uh, and this is it. And, you know, this is a character of Ara Chris in a holocron. And this really, when people were going crazy over three, I was like, what? Are you seriously a holocron? You guys are somebody in a holocron is going to drive everybody crazy? But apparently it was because everybody, by that time, the High Republic was uh, coming out. Everybody's talking about the High Republic. And he had said that that character is going to be in the High Republic. He actually named who it was and said she was going to be in the High Republic. Now, she only says two words in there. She's in a holocron. I don't, I'm not sure. If, do they identify her? They may, they may not. Who knows? They don't no. identify who she is. So figure out what that is. Good luck, kids. You guys can argue over that when you're done figuring out what the first appearance of Wolverine is. Um, so, uh, so, I mean, you know, it's kind of cool because that was added in. But those are the little, like, tidbits. You know, you have Darth Vader's lightsaber. You got the castle. You got... You know, he puts in, uh, you know, he talks about uh, old Sith Lords in there. He does all these little tidbits um, that he keeps dropping in in little storyline fillers. And then there's areas that, like, you know, the Knights of Ren. So there's this whole area you can backfill. Um, but what he also does is he gives these information to other people. So we know stuff like Kevin Scott has used stuff, characters, has referenced characters that he has used before in his book, like Master and Apprentice, which was about Dooku and stuff like that, which was done years before that. So they have, they are on, on point with all this. They have laid the foundation already and years in advance about a lot of this stuff. So after he does Kylo Ren, he gets a Marvel thousand. You guys remember Marvel thousand came out? Yeah. It's like, there was like Marvel 80, comics 1000. I swear to God, he works on so many comics that has like 80,000 covers. <laughs> yeah. So in Marvel, he's comics, a popular we'll writer, right? In Marvel comics, 1000, he does like this two pager, maybe, it mm -hmm. kind of reminded me a lot of the stuff that you'd see in like the um, Insider magazine where they'd have like good writers or yeah. artists go in and write a little mm -hmm. skit on it. And it has to do with an uh, excellent pilot who uh, ends up trying to sacrifice herself by flying into Vader and then Vader force pushed her wreckage out of the way and whatever. Uh, it wasn't too long, but if you're going to collect the whole, his whole works, that's something you probably should go out there and get. <laughs> And there's a thousand, by the way, there's a thousand of those. So you can grab yeah. any one of them. The story's the same in all of them. Good luck <laughs> with that. So then Star Wars decided to do, I guess you could call this a one shot. It's more of a preview. They decided to do Emperor, uh, Empire Ascendant and, or however you say this one shot. What's so, it a preview for? A lot of things actually. So like it's Bounty Hunter. They do a couple pieces of Bounty Hunter in oh, there. Oh, okay. Which, uh, which is the book that has to do, which is really cool. That's the one where, like, for some reason in that book, too, the, 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 there's a Bubba Fett cover in that series that just went crazy. Um, yeah. It's not like it's the first time Bubba Fett's ever been on a cover, but whatever. Yeah, whatever people like. Cool so, cover. Yeah, it's a cool cover. I, luck, I was lucky to get that pretty cheap, but like that, um, because I knew it because I saw it in the preview, of course, or whatever. We're not calling it a preview because <laughs> technically it wasn't a preview. It was a one shot, I guess. But they also, then they had this it's a cameo. Episode, Say it. Say well, it. it's not a cameo because it's like it's like four or five pieces of storyline, whatever. So then they, so they, they, so in that though they have, and this is the first time that I went back to reading this series and actually buying it in floppies the week it comes out uh, was a Star Wars series. He started rewriting the Star Wars title, and when he started rewriting the Star Wars title, he did this thing where he once again started doing backfiller, and one of the backfillers he did was he started to go back to uh, Cloud City and where Luke Skywalker lost his hand. Um, actually, I think in the second book, it says return, it's, I think it's called Return to Cloud City. He actually shows like Luke's hand getting call, cut off and like falling down the hole. And there's this mysterious character that reaches out with a glove and a robe and grabs it. And then it was kind of hokey. Like there's just like, somebody standing there right when that happened. Yeah, well, the levels and the hand underneath is just fall, yeah. like spiraling down. It's actually kind of cool art, but like, yeah, it's very hokey. And then, so two comes out, then three comes out, and three doesn't reveal who the character is, doesn't talk about that, doesn't even talk really much about the lightsaber. It's pretty much just like, you wouldn't know it was part of the same series, to tell you the truth. Uh, and then four came out, and with four, you had a Ugnat, which we call the Nick Nolte Ugnat, because it very might maybe, and it's the actual <laughs> lightsaber. 
it, it's an actual lightsaber. It's Luke's lightsaber, and he's looking at it, and he found it in the trash dump. And what happens is, even in that four, you see the the cloaked figure saying, "Luke, it's your destiny," and holding it. In one scene, towards the end, you see a bunch of stormtroopers fall down, which we assume somehow the cloaked figure. I don't know. Look, this is the problem with his stuff. You can't guess what's going to happen because you're going to think that Palpatine put a baby in Shmi, and then you're going to be <laughs> completely wrong. All I know is there's a bunch of stormtroopers that fall. A little bit later, Luke's lightsaber falls, and and the um, Ugnat picks it up. So I assume that the cloaked figure is going to come down there. Maybe that isn't Nick Nolte Ugnat. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But um, I assume that we're not going to see or figure that out for another two or three books. When he finally fishes that off, we'll probably review it again because I do, like I said, I really am enjoying this this form of the Star Wars series. It's a good run, and I love the way that they're going back and, and filling in timeline from Empire Strikes Back because it's literally after Luke and Vader have their duel and the cutoff, and then you see what happens with Leia and Lando and Chewie yep. and the Falcon and where oh, they cool. go and now yeah, they, and they end yeah. up and and back and forth. So it really, I love that he's filling in that that empty space that we have missed before. Definitely read the series. Uh, it, it's really really good. It's like what he did in Vader, but more mature. You can tell the writing has gotten better. You can tell he's tightened up a lot of stuff in it. Um, and the direction is is a little better. So you see that going on, and you're like, wow, they have really invested a lot with this guy now. He's he's, you know, he's got the right hand. He's right in there with all the writers and everything else. And by the way, uh, I should have prefaced this before that another video came out, The Fall, and I kind of talked about it earlier. The Fall in Order came out. In The Fall in Order, they use like three characters and four story parts that they arc into that thing, even though he wasn't part of it, that they put in there. And that game, if you don't know. That's like how much uh, Knights of the Old Republic, people love that. People, that game, when it came out, people were like, nope. They were sitting at, I mean, they were sitting at home running that game. And that game, I think the first cutscenes came out, like the whole, it's an hour and 45 minutes to see all the cutscenes, I think. I think the first video on cutscenes came out like within 72 hours of the game. I yeah. mean, somebody, it's an hour <laughs> and 45 minutes of cutscenes, yeah. and somebody got that all together in three days. Like, yeah. So, pe- I mean, and people were running through it. I mean, it was going crazy when it first came out. I think people to this day are still paying. I mean, I think it's still a pretty pricey game to get. So, it's still pretty popular. Oh, yeah. It's huge. It's so he, huge. So, he had some influence in that. I, I know for a fact that two of the sisters show up there and they finish off some of the sisters' arcs in there. The character, the main character in that, the playable character, ends up cutting off her hand. And he's like, ah, how are you going to do anything without a hand? And she references the comic book in Vader where, he, where Vader, where Soul had Vader remove one of her eyes and remove her limbs and some of the limbs for the other quizzers. So there's like a direct reference to the comic books in, in gotcha. the uh, cut scenes. So it's really cool. Like she to said, she's, she says she's prepared for it because it's happened to her before. Yeah, she goes, oh, I can deal with loss because it happened before. And then she like yeah. force uses her lightsaber without a hand. And then like, well... You know, there's no more story to gotcha. her, so you can yeah. probably figure. Well, actually, they kind of open ended what happened with her. So, like, she disappeared, but you don't know for sure because they don't, you know, they don't kill people in the video games. Really. Well, they kind of do. Oh, yeah. Well, they do because in the comic book too, he did this cool thing where that he had uh, one of the sisters and one of the brothers, Vader's, made them ignite their lightsabers on each other and kill themselves, which was kind of cool. Two of the Inquisitors. <laughs> so some of the Inquisitors are gone, but there's still some around. Maybe. We don't know, um, but then so then that leads into the into kind of like where we're closing up with him and what he, what he's going to do next, and you know he's the first book that's supposed to be coming out for and it's been pushed back. But the first book that's supposed to be coming out for the Star Wars High Republic, guess who they're going to have write it? You know they're going to have Charles write it, and and apparently it's pretty good. We've read I've read a, a chapter, maybe a couple pages. It wasn't much in it, um, and you know I know for a fact that in some of the fan posts and stuff like that. And I know there's been a little bit of backlash that like there always has about the female characters and everything else that he leads into. Um, and maybe what they should, why, whatever it is, like people are redesigning what she should look like maybe. But she seems like there's a lot of people talking about her. And since she showed up in Kylo Ren 3, I think there's been a lot of, a lot of fans that are supporting that. Uh, there's also Wookiee. Uh, there's one of, what, something you were interested in in that book, I think. Yeah, because they... There's a Jedi Wookiee, and so in Clone Wars, they show the Jedi Wookiee as a Padawan, and they show him go get his kyber crystal with all the other Padawans. Now, I'm looking for his name. But here. I, I so don't know if I'm going to find it. I don't know if they're going to play out that those two are the same. I don't think can't. they're going to. 
They can't because you got so this is it will explain the timeline now. So now this is the first time that he's going to be writing pre timeline. So there was a gap. Uh, John, I don't know if you remember this, but there was one time Wookie, you, you didn't maybe know about. Maybe I'll pull it out of the, the draft room one day. There was a time where John had a question <laughs> about a character because mm-hmm. actually, as they were talking, like they called this stuff the Lum- Illuminary or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "When do you think the Illuminary takes place?" Because they say they've never used it before. Can these people show up? And I ended up hand scratching out like across huge the huge papers. It was it was ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about uh, that. A timeline. I just scratched out a whole yeah. timeline, and I think it took up like you know a bunch of it took up my whole table and everything else and i was like oh it's going to be 400 years be uh you know before um the skywalker saga pretty much because there's a gap there of like 200 years so that wookie that you see in this book and any of these characters you see in this book there hasn't really been anything that came out of that timeline and i mean i scoured it's tough it's there's i just remember there's gapping there's a couple things that could be maybe around that time but a lot of it the characters would have would have to, there's no nihilist you know that's that's thousands of years past because i know that that was one oh that was a question you asked you asked me about nihilist and then about maybe darth bane or something like that and i was like no let me explain to you when this could happen and then mm-hmm. it came out that they called it high republic and they're like yeah 400 uh so we're talking and, and the wookie that i'm talking about is in star wars number seven and that's master tyvoke tyvoka yeah and he was and so that guy was in clone wars right yeah, and he's in the Clone Wars. So he would have been. I I think he gets Order of Sixty Six. He does, and he would have been. He would have. I think he does too. And he would have been a kid, in like twenty, maybe twenty. Well, really five. So like BBY before the battle. No, not before the battle of Yemen. Uh, yeah, before the battle of Yemen. So yeah, and BBY. we're talking four hundred. So this guy's already an adult, four hundred. So it can't be the same character. And that's really what they're trying to get into. They're trying to get into characters that are disassociated. And we know that Soul can already tell stories and backstories and fill in. So he's already going to be very detail oriented. And we also know that what he writes, because he's a writer, ends up getting used cross the cross platform. So it gets it gets used in other people's novels. It gets used in the video games. It gets used in books. So whatever portion that you like, like whatever portion you're down with, um, you guys, video game players, if you're collectors, if you're you're run people, if you like the background storyline, if you like canon, we know that probably in that novel there's going to be a lot of stuff that sticks around, and it might not even stuff that he writes later on, but it's probably going to flow over. So when when the High Republic book comes out, that's probably something like a Jedi. If you feel like some soft reading because you got nothing better to do, I'd suggest picking it up because that might give you some leads to what's going to actually happen here in this next realm, and he's going to he's going to lay down the profile for it, and I think future stuff's going to come up. I mean, after he, you know, he's known. The, if you go back and look, he did the Poe book, which was okay. But halfway through, he started writing another comic. And if you're into comics, I would, I would imagine that you know this this novel is probably gonna come out, in two, you know, right in around the winter time, end of fall maybe. It'll probably come August. The, I think. the High Republic. Yeah, when's that book coming out? Do you know? Uh, January fifth, twenty twenty one. Oh, so they moved it already a... January. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll be at least he'll be at least. 12 issues, 14 issues into this and he'll have a novel already. So he, that means he'll be working probably because they let him work a lot on double projects. So I wouldn't imagine. Oh, yeah. and, and that'll be perfect because if any of you are looking for a birthday gift, that's the day after my birthday and that would make <laughs> a great gift. Hey, would you like to give us your Thanks in advance. <laughs> hey, could you give us your social security number and your, your mom's maiden name too on the internet real quick? <laughs> Anyways. But, 20 copies of a soft cover novel. That's right. <laughs> 36 again, and it's going to be great. Speaking of that, I don't know if you guys do it, but like Barnes & Noble's, just a FYI, Barnes & Noble's for the longest time had Star Wars exclusives in the last book or two books I think I bought from there. I didn't see the exclusive anymore. So I'm kind of disappointed. Guys, in the comments, if you're getting them, and I just missed it because, you know, it's tough now to deal with uh, everything that's going on because my state is still pretty pretty well on uh, lockdown up here. Uh, let me know if you if, if they are doing the exclusives and I just somehow got bamboozled on it or whatever. Um, also, too, if there's other stuff you guys want us to tie in because I think we're going to do that. We might do – there's not a ton on Scott, so we might do Scott and Gray, who's another person that I really like. Obviously, a lot of these that we're going over are things that I really enjoy. Um and probably some of my favorite, but I'm more than happy to talk about your favorites too. Uh, so let me know what your favorites are. You got to force smash that like button. You've got to force choke that subscribe. And you have to f- 
saber smash that bell so you can be alerted when all these handsome faces come to you from a galaxy far, far away.